Welcome to a brief orientation on the approval process to offer a new educator preparation program. It is important to note that approved Washington State preparation programs are required to have a physical location in Washington State. This orientation will cover just the basics of the process, requirements, and where you can find more information. Send any questions prompted by this orientation to pesb at k12.wa.us. SB oversees and approves preparation programs for the educator roles that you see listed on this slide. So why do prospective program leaders seek approval from the board? Other than to ensure alignment with the state law, our aim is also a system of quality Washington State educator preparation programs that fully support a diverse population of candidates and their future students. Proposals to offer a preparation program are considered as part of that preparation system. What do we mean by quality? Quality is defined by the standards maintained by our board, which include areas such as cultural responsiveness, program sustainability, state and workforce shortage, and need, and need, and much more. We'll talk more about standards in a moment. On this slide, you see the three stages of our approval process. You are at the very beginning of the process. We'll be looking at each stage in details in next few slides. The three stages of the approval process are designed to mirror a program design process and to encourage an increasingly clear picture of the proposed program at each successive stage. Additionally, our approval process addresses and verifies all program standards and requirements, as well as requires prospective program leaders to demonstrate need for the proposed program. Proposal questions are also intended to encourage program learning and innovation. If approved, programs are reviewed at the initial 27 month mark and ultimately annually. The information collected during approval mirrors and prepares programs for what is collected in review. As mentioned earlier, quality is defined through our standards. The board maintains several types of standards. Program standards define what programs do and how they do it. Role standards are what candidates learn and demonstrate through a program. Endorsement competencies outline what teacher candidates must know in each endorsement or subject area. And finally, the cultural competency, diversity, equity, and inclusion standards, or the CCDEI standards, hone in on the specific knowledge, skills, and program actions related to cultural competency. Program, role, and cultural competency standards apply to all types of preparation programs. Endorsement competencies relate to residency teacher and CTE plan one programs only. You can find the standards and learn more at the link provided here. Before seeking approval, please read and explore the relevant standards. A major priority for our board is cultural responsiveness in both program design and candidate knowledge and skills. Cultural responsiveness also appears strongly through our program standards and the CCDEI or cultural competency, diversity and equity standards. Board members are constantly engaging in conversations regarding how to prepare and retain cultural responsiveness uh, among ed educators. Cultural responsiveness takes into account the whole candidate and the whole child. It leads to the historical, cultural, and political context in which teaching, leading, and learning occur. 
It results in personalized learning that builds on diversity, equity, and social justice. There are five essential components of cultural responsiveness, as you can see on this slide. First, knowledge of self and others. Second, learning communities. Third, relevant curriculum. Fourth, candidate and student-centered instruction. And fifth, social justice. As it specifically relates to educator preparation programs, cultural responsiveness is understood and demonstrated on two levels. First, your program structures, systems, and actions must be culturally responsive in order to support and empower candidates, especially candidates from underrepresented populations. Second, your curriculum and course content must be set up to produce culturally responsive completers who can be responsive to their future students, schools, and districts. So in the next few slides, we're gonna be sharing some relevant specifics regarding some of the program types that PESB approves. So the alternative routes to certification are non-traditional pathways designed for career changers and for individuals already working in the school system who want to earn their residency teacher certificate. Compared to traditional teacher preparation programs, Washington's alternative routes are intended to be shorter, more convenient, more affordable, and more practically oriented for candidates. Alternative route programs operate as a partnership between a teacher preparation program and at least one district partner to address a state or a local shortage. There are a total of four alternative routes in Washington authorized in WAC 181-80. If an institution is already approved to offer a residency teacher traditional route program and wishes to offer alternative routes to teacher certification, prospective program leaders will undergo the same three-step approval process. Follow the link here to learn more about alternative routes, including program and candidate requirements. So still in the realm of the teacher roles, but moving to program types related to career and technical education, you can see that there are two program options to obtain an initial CTE teacher certificate. CTE plan one, which is the college and university route and CTE plan two, which is the business and industry route. CTE plan one programs are designed for the more typical university candidates. Completing a CTE Plan 1 results in both an initial CTE teacher certificate and a residency teacher certificate. Completers also become endorsed in one or more broad area endorsements, including agriculture, business and marketing, family and consumer sciences, and technology. CTE Plan 2 programs are really designed for career changers. For example, a welder who has 20 years of experience in welding and is now interested in teaching welding to high school students. This welder might pursue a CTE Plan 2 program. Completing a CTE Plan 2 program results in an initial CTE teacher certificate. But rather than becoming endorsed in a broad area endorsement, candidates receive a specialty area relating to their previous occupational experience. Additionally, teachers who hold residency certificates often pursue their initial CTE certificate through a Plan 2 program. CTE Plan 1 and Plan 2 programs have different requirements for occupational experience, assessments, and degrees. Learn more at the link provided here. Just to note, there are no alternative routes for CTE programs. Now we will be moving away from teacher roles. So a note for residency school counselor and school psychologist programs. PESB's approval of these program types is conditional on accreditation from the relevant national accrediting organizations. While in the PESB approval process, prospective programs must be in the process of obtaining the national accreditation. 
if approved by PESB. To maintain that approval, the program must maintain accreditation from the relevant national organization. The national accrediting body for school psychologist programs is the National Association for School Psychologists. And the national accrediting body for school counselor programs is the Council for the Accreditation of Counseling and Related Educational Programs. The caveat here is that for a given school psychologist or counselor program, PSB may approve the substitution of alternative national standards if those standards are deemed e equivalent by the board. You can find more information in WAC 181-78A-225. Not all preparation program providers or institutions are able to offer credits. Credits and degrees can be offered by accredited colleges and universities. Other types of providers cannot offer credits. It is also important to note that approved clock hour providers can offer clock hours to their candidates as long as courses follow clock hour course requirement. For profit institutions cannot become clock hour providers. Make sure your proposed program is aligned with what your provider type can offer, clock hours, credits, etc. Programs are required to maintain knowledge of certification requirements and share this knowledge accurately with their candidates. With that in mind, we'll be sharing a broad overview of various certification and program completion requirements. Certification and program completion requirements include a variety of themes covered on the next few slides. Note that these slides are not exhaustive. So I would recommend you pausing on the next few slides and reading the overview provided and exploring the links and other related information as you find it. So here we will start with testing requirements. As you can see here, to enter a teaching program, candidates are required to take a basic skills test as a part of their program application. While they're in the program, they must attempt at least one content knowledge test before beginning their student teaching. In order to complete the program, they must meet the program's performance requirements. And finally, to become certified, they must meet the content knowledge requirements for their endorsement area. The assessment information is shown here as well in a different format. It is tailored to residency teacher and CTE plan one programs. For other role types, visit our website for role specific assessment requirements. In addition to the assessments, PESB has established a case-by-case -case exception process, which allows PESB approved endorsement programs to examine alternative evidence to determine if a candidate has the required knowledge and skills. You can click on the link in this slide deck to learn more about this. Also a note that in April, 2021, the Washington State Legislature approved the state law eliminating the EdTPA as a state requirement for teacher certification. Again, you can learn more about the policy change by clicking on the link. Programs may choose to continue using the EdTPA as a formative tool as long as they include this information in all of their program descriptions. Each role also has its own degree requirement for certification. Additionally, the WAC and preparation program standards also include instructional topic requirements. This refers to educator role specific topics that preparation programs must include and address in their program. These topics are listed here. You can find more information about each topic on PESB's website by clicking on the link. For all of the above, programs should ensure they are following the related RCW, WAC, and program standards. Like the previous slide, I recommend pausing here and reading the overview provided. 
Explore all the links provided and other related information as you find it. So all roles are required to complete field experiences in which candidates can observe, practice, and learn in a relevant setting. Each role also has their own clinical practice requirements. Clinical practice refers to the formal field experience in which the candidates practices in their role under the supervision of a qualified mentor. To be placed in school settings for field experiences, all candidates must be fingerprinted and hold the required character clearance. Please remember that these slides are not exhaustive. So please feel free to look at all of the links and explore the information provided there. At the start of this orientation, we mentioned that the approval process to offer a new preparation program is a three-stage process. The first stage is a notification of intent or NOI. If you want to offer a new program, this is where you will begin. The NOI indicates that you will be seeking approval and have laid the foundation upon which to design your proposed program. NOIs are received by the board via the consent agenda, and they are ultimately posted to our website once approved. After the NOI is received by the board, prospective program leaders are able to move to the second stage of our approval process, which is the pre-proposal. Through the pre-proposal, Program leaders describe the proposed program in relation to PESP program standards and requirements. At this stage, you must also fully qualify the community and workforce need for the program through qualitative and quantitative data and describe how your program design and methods uniquely fill that need. Proposal responses should be specific and use action-oriented language. As noted earlier, our approval process addresses and verifies all program standards and requirements and is intended to encourage program learning and innovation. Please keep this in mind when designing your program and completing the proposals. Important to note here that a team of PESP staff also reviews the pre-proposal and gives feedback as well as makes a recommendation of whether the pre-proposal is ready to come before the board. Ultimately, pre-proposals are presented to the board by prospective program leaders for an approval decision. If the pre-proposal is approved by the board, prospective program leaders are able to move to the third and final stage of the approval process, which is the full proposal. Through the full proposal, program leaders describe in what ways proposed program leaders will ensure specific program requirements. Program leaders also have an opportunity to provide any changes or updates to proposed strategies and actions from their pre-proposal. There are several attachments at this stage, so please make sure you have completed all attachments prior to submitting the full proposal. Full proposals go on our consent agenda uh, to the board by prospective program leaders for an approval decision if recommended by PESP internal review team. If the full proposal is approved, program leaders should be prepared to fully implement the proposed program. Again, as a side note, um, all our programs use the same NOI and pre-proposal forms. However, as program standards are different for school counselor and school psychologist roles, they have their own full proposal forms. These are the only two roles that use a different full proposal form. All right, just a special note here for community colleges. If a community college is seeking to offer a teacher preparation program leading to a bachelor's degree, then they must also be approved by the Washington State Board of Community and Technical Colleges, or the SBCTC, in order to offer the bachelor's degree. 
this SBCTC process is completely separate from the PESB approval process. Even if the community college is approved by the board, your program cannot operate until the SBCTC approves you to offer a bachelor degree in teaching. Prospective programs must submit all approval materials 60 days in advance of the requested board meeting. There is no guarantee that a proposal will come forward at its requested date. You can find more information online by clicking on the link provided here. And finally, throughout the approval process, there are multiple opportunities for prospective program leaders to access resources and receive guidance and support. PESB staff provide detailed feedback at the pre and full proposal stages, and our website includes a wealth of information regarding the requirements that were skimmed over in this orientation. Again, please be sure to explore all of the links provided here to earn, learn more information. Finally, we would encourage you to connect with us. If you have questions about the approval process, you can contact Projecta or myself at our emails that are provided here. In addition, we encourage you to click, click on the logos provided to connect with PESBE in these different formats. Thank you for listening to the orientation and we look forward to hearing from you soon.